Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, on our Against the Odds poll, it was Demigod of Revenge sneaking out of victory over the other spirit avatars. It was Godhead of All coming in second. Demigod beat out Godhead of All by one percentage point, so a super close vote. So this week, we are heading to Modern to see if we can steal some games with a hasty self reanimation animating flyer. So Demigod of Revenge is a really interesting card, and it was harder to build around than I thought, but the reason isn't the same reason we have a lot of time. Some cards are hard to build around because they're just not that good or not that obviously good, and it really takes some work to make them function. Demigod kind of has the opposite problem, where it's borderline too good for against the odds. It's not a modern staple or anything, but it does show up in modern decks from time to time. We see it in Mono Red Devotion list, some Blood Moon decks can play it, like Free Win Red style decks. So we have played decks. We've actually played Mono Red Devotion with Demigod of Revenge a long, long time ago for Much of Brew. So part of the challenge was trying to do something new with Demigod. I didn't want to just play Mono Red Devotion again. Didn't want to just play a Blood Moon deck again. So I found a pretty sweet, spicy way, I think, to take advantage of the power of Demigod of Revenge. A quick reminder before we break down the deck. If you enjoy this Demigod's End deck, and you enjoy Against Odds in general, it would be amazing of you if you could take a second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel, and the site for free. So let's talk Demigod's End. So first off, the namesake card, Demigod of Revenge, five hybrid black or red mana, and you get a five four with flying and haste. So it's a really quick clock in the air, and when you cast a demigod, you get to reanimate all demigod of revenges from your graveyard. So the idea of this deck, it's kind of twofold. We have a couple of paths to victory. Uh, one is we have a combo kill with demigod of revenge, uh, getting it back from the graveyard with some other cards, and we can win without ever attacking. The other thing we can do is just get some demigod of revenges in our graveyard, cast a demigod of revenge, and beat our opponent down with these hasty flyers, and hopefully win that way. As as you can see, five power means if you get three demigods in your graveyard and you cast one, that represents 20 flying haste power that's going to be really hard for the opponent to deal with. So you can kind of win that way as well. But first, let's talk about the combo plan. And the combo here, this does borrow from Mono Red Devotion. So Fanatic of Mogus, when it enters the battlefield, deals damage equal to your devotion to red. So with one demigod plus the Fanatic, that's six damage. Uh, two demigods, 11 damage. If you have two demigods and somehow two Fanatic of Mogus entering the battlefield at the same time, you just kill your your opponent on the spot with the, the direct damage from the devotion ability on Fnatic. So the idea is we're going to stock our graveyard with demigods, with Fnatic of Moguses, and then we're going to play a living end, get them all back from the graveyard at the same time, and just deal this huge chunk of devotion damage right at our opponent's face. So the reason I like this plan is it works with what demigod wants to do anyway. We already talked about how demigod reanimates other copies of itself, so we want to get copies in the graveyard so we can get them back when we cast a demigod. So since we're stocking our graveyard, Living End is kind of just like an additional demigod. It gets all of our demigods back, but it also gets back a bunch of other stuff as well. And the combo kill means even if we're in a disadvantaged position, say we're up against Dredge and our opponent has a graveyard full of stuff and they're going to get back a ton of things, well we don't really care because ideally, or hopefully, we're going to be killing our opponent with that devotion damage right away. As far as stocking our graveyard, we got Seder Wayfinder and Grizzly Salvage. So these are just cards that help us find our land, which is nice. Our mana base is crazy. We're trying to cast Demigod of Revenge. Also cast some other cards, which some pretty stringent mana cost. So they help us find lands, plus they fill our graveyard, get our Demigods in there, get our Fanatics in there. So when we Living End, we actually win the game. It also can mill Lingering Souls, which is kind of our stall out card. Our big payoffs, Demigod, our ways to play Living End right away, which we'll talk about in a second, are five mana, so we need to stay alive until turn five to win with this deck. And Lingering Souls does a great job of keeping us alive. We make some flying chump blockers, we chump our opponent's stuff, buy ourselves a little bit of time. Doesn't work as well against combo-y spell-based decks, but against creature decks, Lingering Souls does an awesome job of keeping us alive while we're setting up our combo. So as far as the combo itself, we have two different ways of casting our Living End. 
hand. First off, we have Bring the Light. So Bring the Light lets us tutor something directly out of our library and play it as Converge. So we want to be able to cast it for all five colors, because if we can cast it for five colors of mana, we can search out a Demigod of Revenge. So this is a way we can have additional copies of Demigod. So say we manage to mill multiple Demigods, we just tutor one up right out of our library, cast Demigod, win the game. We can also tutor up Living End and get the combo kill. So we mill Demigods, mill Fanatic of Mogus, bring to light, even with zero converge, just for its natural mana cost, can search out a Living End. We cast Living End right away. It's a way we can cast a card without a mana cost, uh, because technically it costs zero mana, but without a mana cost, you can't just cast it from your hand. But we can cast it right away with bring to light, which lets us reanimate everything and win the game that way as well. The second plan we have is Goblin Dark Dwellers, which lets us cast instance or sorceries for free if they have converted mana cost three or less which living end does from our graveyard so our deck is constructed in a way where we have delirium to turn on traverse the uvenwald in the early game traverse can surge up a land help us get our bring to light mana get our demigod mana in the late game we can tutor up a Goblin Dark Dwellers. Hopefully by that time we've milled a copy of Living End, cast Goblin Dark Dwellers, cast the Living End for free, get back all our demigods and stuff, and win that way as well. Uh, we can also just traverse for demigod, just like I was saying with Bring the Light, we mill some demigods, traverse up a copy from our library, cast a demigod, get back all our demigods, win the game with the big beatdowns. So the rest of our deck is kinda to support the Delirium plan. A bunch of one-ofs of specific card types, which are more in the deck because we want their card types in the graveyard to make sure we have Delirium. So Bottle Gnomes gains us a bit of life, can block, can sacrifice itself so it works well with Living End. We can cast it, sack it to gain some life, gets, uh, comes back into play when we resolve a Living End, and it's an artifact for our Delirium count. So Healy Rai seems sweet when we're copying Goblin Dark Dwellers, copying our Demigods, copying Fanatic of Mogus, plus it's a Planeswalker, we mill in our graveyard, ups our Delirium count, Seal of Fire, an enchantment, a little bit of damage, can kill a Delver, a Snapcaster, or a young Pyromancer or something, plus ups our Delirium count. And now we have one Eternal Witness to get back whatever we need, uh, more Grizzly Salvages, we can get back a Living End if we want to suspend it, although that's not that likely, get back a Goblin Dark Dwellers to recast a Living End from our graveyard, all that kind of stuff. If we somehow mill all four copies of Demigod, we can get one back with Eternal Witness, cast a Demigod, win that way. So just kind of all-around value, good tutor target for our Traverse to Uvenwald. Mana base-wise, I didn't put in every land, but basically what it comes down to is Fetch lands, shock lands, basic lands, and one Urborg. Urborg is a way that we can tutor up with our Traverse, because once we have Delirium, we can search for any land with Traverse, and it guarantees we have the mana we need to cast Demigod because of that crazy hybrid mana. So... <laughs> Being able to cast Bring the Light X5 and cast Demigod in the same deck makes our mana really challenging. So we have like every shock land, a bunch of different fetch lands, and that's one of the challenges of this deck is trying to make the mana work. And Urborg just like solves so many problems when we have one because it makes sure we can cast our Demigod no matter what else is happening with our mana base. In the sideboard, we get some more removal. Anger of the Gods Damnation is sweepers. Anger is sweet because it exiles creatures, so they are not going to come back for our opponent when we resolve a living end and then we have a bunch of artifact removal shatterstorm ancient grudge seal primordium ray of revelation thought seas to fight combo decks fulminator mage for trons another bottle gnomes to help keep us alive against more aggressive decks and that is demigod's end for modern and that's our against odds deck for this week so is this gonna work uh, I don't know. I think we can steal some wins because Demigod is pretty powerful and we should be pretty consistent with Bring the Lights, with Traverse the Uvenwalds. We should be pretty consistent at finding and casting Demigods. And we do have a combo kill, which means we can win through Ghostly Prisons, win through Ensnaring Bridges, win all in one big turn from behind. There definitely will be situations with this deck where we have the win set up. We just need to find a Living End and we have like nine Living Ends. If you count God and Dark Dwellers, you come out count the Traverse of Uvenwalds, you count the Bring Delights, we have a ton of ways to get the Living End to get back our Demigods and Fanatics and win that way, so I think we can steal some wins, the problem is, we're just a little bit slow, if you look at all of our payoff cards, Demigod, Dark Dwellers, Bring Delight, 
Those are all five mana. If you throw in Traverse to tutor for them, it's six mana or one plus five split over two turns. So the earliest our deck is going to conceivably win, rely, and it should be pretty consistent, but it's going to be turn five, maybe turn six in some matchups, depending on how things shake out. And in modern, a lot of decks can't tell on turn three, turn four, and we don't have a ton of interaction. We have the Lingering Souls, which are really great if our opponent's beating down with Tarmogoyfs and things like that, but if our opponent's comboing off with that Nauseam or Escape Shift or something, it's not the kind of interaction that will really keep us alive in those matchups. So that that's the question. Are we going to run into matchups where our deck is fast enough to beat what our opponent's doing? Because like I said, we just don't have an overload of removal or counters or anything like that. And then if we run into the slower decks, are they just going to counter our stuff that matters? Demigod itself can't be countered, but you can definitely counter a Living End. You can definitely counter a Bring to Light and things like that. So that's the other problem. If we do run into the slower matchups, do they just have the right answers to stop our combo kill? In those matchups, though, we can just lean on Demigod of Revenge to do the beatdown kill because it triggers when cast, like the Eldrazi, some of the Eldrazi in Standard, so so even if our opponent counters the Demigod, we still get back the copies from our graveyard. So that does give us a good path to victory against heavy control decks. Anyway, that's our against odds for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos. And I will talk to you soon.